Hey guys, today I will show you how to quickly configure Dolphin Emulator to play Spider-Man 2 with the best settings possible. So the first thing you're going to need is of course to download the Dolphin Emulator. You can go to, to this website dolphins-emu.org slash download and here you can find the, uh, either the stable versions or the development versions. The difference between them is that the stable versions are more tested but the development versions are the latest build that the developers are working on so if you, like you can see here the this build was uploaded 15 minutes ago i'm going to download the development version and work with it so what you need to do is just click this button to download the, um, the emulator uh, open it and then uh, extract this folder wherever you want so i already extracted it here as you can see. So now this is the Dolphin Emulator right here and I have um, my ROM inside here. So you can get the ROM, so the image file, uh, by extracting it from your GameCube CD-ROM or else you can find an image file online. So now I, I will open the Dolphin Emulator As you can see here Spider-Man 2 is automatically detected and now I will show you the different tabs and configurations to run Spider-Man 2 as best as possible. I will open the, the config tab so in the general tab I left everything on default except for the frame limit. Um, it was on 60 and I will set it to 65. This is because I was experiencing some input lag with 60 so when I increased it to 65 that input lag was uh, resolved. And moving on to the interface tab, I, lost, I left everything uh, on default, the audio tab as well, uh, even on the GameCube, uh, the Wii tab we will not be using. So the parts is the ISO directories, is the folder where you have copied your Spider-Man 2 image file ROM into. So for instance mine is uh, the ROMs folder right here, like, uh, like I showed you previously. This is the the path. I copied it in the Dolphin emulator here. As you can see, it's the same uh, folder. So if you want to add a different directory, you just go to Add, um, find it, and then um, click on Select Folder, for example. So, uh, and if you want to have a default ISO image, you can select uh, the same folder and select the Spider-Man 2 image, for example. So it's this for me. And it will load um, in the title screen here afterwards. Uh, moving on to it, the advanced tab, I left everything on default as well. So now I will show you my graphic settings. As you can see, as the backend I'm using the OpenGL instead of Direct3D, I get a much more consistent frame rate with OpenGL instead of uh, Direct3D. Um, uh, so my resolution is 1920 by 1080. Uh, the aspect ratio I do it uh, 16 by 9 because the game uh, is originally 4 by 3. Um, I have checked show FPS, this is uh, no, an optional uh, frame rate counter which displays at the top left of the screen when you are playing. Um, uh, moving on to the enhancements tab, I changed the internal resolution to 3x so it displays the, the render image for uh, 1080p. I'm using 4x SSAA as anti-aliasing. If you have, if you don't have enough powerful hardware, I would suggest turning this down because uh, it affects the performance quite a lot. Um, I'm using 16 times uh, anisotropic filtering, for example. So, uh, as post-processing effect, I chose uh, Dolphin Effect, but I will show you those options in a minute. Those options in a minute. Uh, moving on, I ticked scale DFB. This increases the quality of the textures, as you can see at the bottom here. Um, uh, I chose as well per pixel lighting, it gives better lighting to the game, basically. Um, I've, I checked as well for texture filtering, which 
makes the textures look, look better and I'm using the widescreen hack. I will show this in game how this affects the aspect ratio of the game. So because like I stated the game is originally in as a 4 4 by 3 game but when you use the widescreen hack it renders the game in 16 by 9 in an accurate fashion instead of stretching the monitor's resolution. So for hacks I'm I just unticked store EFB copies to texture only. You need to untick this because um, Spider-Man 2 has graphical glitches. Um, the other options I just left them on default. So moving on to the advanced tab, I left everything unticked here. So to get and install Dolphin FX, uh, you just need to download it. I will put a download link in the description below this video, or you can also just Google it. After you download it, you just go into SYS folder here, um, shaders, and you just um, paste it here. So if I were to download it, I just go, I just extract it on the desktop here, just copy it, go into SYS folder, shaders, and paste it here. And there we have the Dolphin FX. And then when you go, when you open uh, Dolphin Emulator, you can find it in the enhancements. Just uh, click on the drop-down menu here, and you can find Dolphin FX and configure it uh, like you want. So now I will uh, go in game and show you um, the widescreen hack and the Dolphin FX. So this is the game running uh, at 1080p with uh, Dolphin FX and all the other custom hacks um, enabled. So I will show you what each hack does, uh, just to get an idea of the improvement. So like I stated, the game is 4x3 and if we don't use the widescreen hack, um, this is what happens. The game gets stretched to uh, your monitor and it doesn't look quite as well as when you use the widescreen hack like this. So now moving on to uh, Dolphin FX, um, I will show you what this does. So currently it's uh, running with Dolphin FX. If I disable it, as you can see, the game is much less vibrant and the textures are not as detailed as, as when uh, Dolphin FX is um, running. So I will enable it again. So you can see the difference. For my preset I'm using Blended Bloom. As you can see it gives um, a brighter picture overall. Scene Tone Mapping, which uh, again increases the overall brightness of the game. Um, color Correction, I'm, it's a minor tweak as you can see. Um, I'm not using filmic process. Um, use a gamma correction here, which is a minor tweak, but it uh, gives better shadows in my opinion. Um, uh, texture sharpening, as you can see from the ground here, when I disable it, uh, it com it looks completely flat, and with texture sharpening, it gives a bit of detail back to the textures. So uh, pixel vibrance is basically gives the game a more colorful look. Uh, contrast enhancement makes levels of black and white more evident, as you can see. I'm not using the cell shading effect, neither the scan lines or the film grain, but I'm using the vignette effect, which basically shades the borders of the game, as you can see. And I'm also using the tethering. Um, I'm not really sure what it does in game, but I have it enabled because, from past experience with using sweet effects, for example, it tries to mimic the effect of the game having more colors. So, for the last part, I will show you the different uh, resolutions which you can get in game. So, this is the native. Uh, so it's 528p, the, the original resolution at which the game ran on the GameCube. Um, uh, this is 720p. Moving on is 1080p. 
144p and here is 4k as you can see the detail is exponentially increasing and the FPS is decreasing as well though and here is 5k for the sake of it as you can see it gives uh, the FPS um, gets quite a hit when 5k is enabled I normally just run with 1080p because it looks good enough for me so that's basically the the options I use to run the game it runs uh, perfectly for me so I, I don't have any hitches or glitches running um, maybe some uh, drops in FPS will occur right now when I'm recording and uh, gaming at the same time but um, with normal gameplay I don't experience any um, any performance loss so like I stated those are my settings if you have any queries please leave them in the comment section below this video.